Hello, Dr. Joe here. Today, we're going to be talking about alcohol and cancers. There is a link between alcohol and cancers. For instance, did you know that one in six breast cancer cases is attributable to alcohol? And by the way, this is preventable. So much so that the U.S. Surgeon General has suggested that alcoholic beverages should carry similar warnings like you see in cigarette packs. So what I'm going to do in this very video is show you the link between alcohol and cancers. There are four mechanisms involved and I'm going to explain all of that to you. How about we jump right in? All right, so we're going to be looking at four mechanisms through which alcohol raises your risk of cancers. So, mechanism number one, let's kick off with that. And that has to do with acetaldehyde. And acetaldehyde is a known carcinogen. So, how does acetaldehyde come about? Well, acetaldehyde is formed from alcohol. Okay, it's formed from alcohol through a conversion uh, that begins in the mouth. As soon as the alcohol lands in your mouth, the conversion process begins and you end up with acetaldehyde as a metabolite. And acetaldehyde is a problem. Now, what does the conversion for you? Well, the bacteria and the yeast in your mouth, they do the conversion. And like I said, as soon as the alcohol lands in your mouth, the bacteria and the yeast, they spring into action and then they start doing the conversion. And the longer the alcohol lasts in your body, the more acetaldehyde that is produced. So if you consumed a lot of alcohol, then you're going to end up with a lot more acetaldehyde because it's going to take longer uh, for your body to get rid of the alcohol. And then you end up with lots of acetaldehyde and that raises your risk of cancer because the buildup of acetaldehyde raises the risk of DNA damage in the mouth and in the esophagus. So, uh, that's not good news at all. And here's the other thing you should know. When you combine alcohol with tobacco, that raises the risk of gene toxicity. Okay? So there is an exponential rise of genotoxicity when you combine your alcohol with tobacco. And lots of people do that all the time. Uh, when they have a drink, uh, they're going to have a smoke as well. And uh, when you do that, just realize that uh, you're raising the risk of gene toxicity. And that means the mouth and the esophagus, they are particularly at risk of cancer. So that is mechanism number one. Let's move on to mechanism number two as to how alcohol raises your risk of cancer. And that has to do with uh, hormonal imbalance, especially in women, because alcohol alters hormonal balance in men and women. But uh, this is particularly important in women uh, because alcohol increases the conversion of testosterone to estrogens, okay, to estrogens or estrogens, depending on the, how you pronounce it. Of course, men do have testosterone, and that testosterone is going to be converted to estrogens. And uh, women also have testosterone too, because the ovaries do produce testosterone. And you end up with peripheral conversion of this testosterone to estrogens, and uh, that raises your risk of cancers of breast and prostate. Okay? Of course, breast in women and prostate uh, in men. So the excess estrogen raises that risk. So this is how alcohol raises your risk of uh, cancers uh, in mechanism number two. Let's move on to mechanism number three. And uh, this one has to do with liver impairment. And uh, what happens here? Well, when your liver is impaired, then it's not going to do its job properly. It's not able to detoxify harmful chemicals or substances that are introduced to your body. And then uh, you end up with accumulation of toxins. And of course, when you have lots of toxins floating around your body, then there's a possibility they're going to damage your DNA. And of course, that then raises your risk of cancer. So that is mechanism number three. Let's move on to mechanism number four, through which alcohol raises your risk of cancer. And that one has to do with impaired 
immune system. Impaired immune system. How does this work? Well, when your immune system is impaired, that means your immune cells cannot fight off external invaders and also they cannot mop up cancer cells. Because believe it or not, we all have cancer cells in our bodies, not a lot, uh, but these cells don't stick around because the immune cells, they go around, mop up these cancer cells, and uh, that's it. That's end of story. However, when your immune cells are impaired, then obviously they're going to lack the power to mop up any cancer cells that may be floating around your body. And uh, this is not good news at all. So there you go. My job is to provide you with the information. What you do with the information is up to you. So I'm hoping that you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. Got any questions, any comments, leave them down below. I think that's it for this very video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.